I'm from a town where the young never shut our eyes Pick your poison, you could ride with those other guys Life is more than just a dream when your team's strong We write anthems, this is more than just a theme song Rock bees on our winter wears Welcome to Benam, the home of the phenoms It's only one city that we lean on, we call that What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network Gaming Commentary here to bring you another edition of our Pokemon 5th Gen Battles. Now before we get into this one, this one is a ranked silver match. It was really great and as I told you guys beforehand, I'm using the Priority Fang Team in the next few battles so this way you guys can see exactly how they operate. I'm not changing a single thing so you can see their utility in multiple situations so you can know when they're good, when they're not so good, how to play with them, etc, etc. So some of you guys are asking me to switch the teams already but that's not what the point of this is. The point of this is to really put this team to the absolute highest standard test possible. Put it in every single situation possible and see just how viable it really is. That's the way I see it. That's going to be the project on here. So we're going to have a few more battles with the Priority Fang and then we'll probably switch it up later on. Probably I think of a new strategy or something. But for the most part, that's the gist of it. Anyways, guys, I have us another battle today against somebody from the Small Gun Wi-Fi Battle Finder who goes by the name of Piccolino. Piccolino was a great opponent. Why? Because we had us a damn good game. He was a little impatient, but hey man, it didn't change the fact that the factors behind this game were incredibly good. So good that this battle is ranked silver. Now, some of you may not know, but silver does not determine anything but how intense the match was. It's not like I'm ranking my opponent. It's just the game because, you know, you can have a battle with somebody and it can be an incredible match, right? And then you can have another battle afterwards and somebody gets swept 6-0, you know? So that kind of thing happens all the time, a lot more frequent than you would usually think, especially with big YouTubers. So basically what the point of this is, is to show you guys that there is, you know, a human side to Pokemon. There is a real side. There are points when you make mistakes. Everyone does, you know, it's not something to be ashamed about. You just learn from them, move on. Either way, let's open up the team preview right now. Sun Team, Sun Team, Sun Team, Sun Team. And Venusaur on that Sun Team bothers me. Why? Because Venusaur could have growth, it could have sleep powder, hidden power, or ice with the, with the um, weather ball. I'm not sure if it gets weather ball or not. But either way, Venusaur on a Sun Team has always bothered me. But then again, you never see it on any other team besides Sun. So hey. Oh. <sighs> Sorry about that. Next off, we got Espeon. And by the way, if you guys can't tell, it's really like dark and rainy and cold outside. It looks like it's about to be crazy. It's funny because today it's really dark, cold, and rainy, but yesterday it was about 90 degrees outside. Thanks, Mother Nature. Anyways, um, we got Espeon in here. Espeon is not really too much of a problem. I don't really even see these things as a threat. The only reason why people have them is for magic bounce, which in my opinion is really redundant, really stupid. Why? Because you just bring your own setup instead of bouncing theirs back, you know? Because Espeon's gonna die eventually, so frail. Either way, next up we have Terrakion, Terrakion, and you know, it's probably gonna be either char I mean, Scarfed or Banded, so you know, I gotta figure that out. But I will be able to tell by the damage what it is. Next up, we have Gar Chisel in there. Thankfully, not in the sand. I was, <laughs> you know, I always get nervous, even to this day when I see Garchomp on the team, because you know, fourth gen Garchomp, like I used to get like people just bringing it to Oh, you with no problem whatsoever. And I'd be like, dude, it's Uber. And they'd be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, oh God. And you can really not hit that thing in the sand. But this Garchomp isn't in the sand, so it's all good. Either way, then finally we got the Reuniclus. And Reuniclus is going to be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to experimenting on this team with a super fan. Because as you can see here, he's got a lot of offensive power on here. He's got Garchomp, he's got Teriyaki on, and he's got Reuniclus on there. Very, very big offensive threats in their own respect. So, you know, it's going to be a really offensive team. I'm going to have to break my way through this. Let's see how well the Super Fang does. Let's not waste any more time with that team preview. Let's go into that battle right now. So as I said, this one was against somebody named Piccolino. And um, I'm going to start off with my Mew. While he is going to start off with his Ninetales, no big surprise there. Either way, I'm going to have to figure out something because nothing on my team really wants to take a Fire Blast like that except for Mew. So I'm going to go for the Super Fang here. And I'm just going to cut his HP down. Now he shows me he has Nasty Plot too. So I'm like, okay, nothing really wants to take a Fire Blast from this damn Ninetales because 
it's gonna do a hell of a lot of damage no matter what it is. So you know, I'm figuring I do not need to lose Mew this early because Mew could be valuable for taking down Terriakion, it could be useful for taking down Garchomp. So I just send in my Spiritomb to die, essentially, because Spiritomb won't really prove to be too well used on this team except for Reuniclus. I'm hoping that it could live a hit and then go for a priority move and Sucker Punch and take this guy out. Thankfully, I live the Solar Beam, go for the Sucker Punch and take this guy down, so thank goodness. Now, I don't know why he went for the Solar Beam. Maybe he thought I was going to go into my um, Basculin. But either way, it's all good. Now, he goes for the Sleep Powder here, while me, I'm thinking, okay, since Spiritomb is pretty much done, it already took out Ninetales, I don't really think I need it to take out Reuniclus, let me just go for a Curse. I actually am able to hit the Curse, take the Venusaur down. Sure, he missed the Sleep Powder, but it's 75% accuracy, what are you gonna do, you know? Either way, now this Venusaur is cursed, so it'll just make it easier to kill it. I was thinking that Lucario would be strong enough to take this Venusaur down with one extreme speed, but sadly, I am not. I play too recklessly. I get hit with the Sleep Powder. I really would not have wanted Lucario put to sleep. I would have preferred Goldbat put to sleep, but my foolish ass was thinking, oh, the curse will probably kill the Venusaur off at the end of the turn after I use extreme speed. It doesn't, sadly. I should have switched here. I should have really switched here. I thought he, he would have switched probably, but either way, he catches me with the Earthquake because my dumbass stayed in with Lucario, so I lose Lucario really early, which is a really bad move because Lucario is a priority killer. He's not supposed to really die that early. Either way, um, I pretty much lost two of my priority killers. I lost Spiritomb and Lucario, so the only one that's really here for Superstar on priority is my um, Basculin. But here's the beauty of the priority Fang. You only need one priority killer to sweep up their team if you've got your Fangers left, so it's all good. Either way, his Terrakion comes in. That Stone Edge does not kill me, so an impressive bulk on Gro Golbat's part. It lives a Stone Edge from a Terrakion who's most likely choice. That's some impressive shit. Either way, knowing that he's most likely choice, I go back in there with my Nidoqueen, who's max HP, max defense. I'm able to take that well, but seeing that damage, and seeing that I am max HP, max defense, and resisted it, I'm thinking he's maybe choice banded. Either way, I'm not really too concerned, because I do have my Nidoqueen, who will be a direct counter to Terrakion if he's not carrying an Earthquake. I go for the Super Fang here, catching the Reuniclus, but because Reuniclus has leftovers, I'm going to be really bothered by that. So, then, so the way I'm thinking I gotta take this Reuniclus out is go in there with Mew, and hit him with a knockoff, get his HP low enough to wear, Basculin can come in and kill him with either an Aqua Jet or a Crunch, but what's good about this is that Basculin will be faster than Reuniclus naturally, so I can just go in there and crunch him anytime I see him in there. But I gotta be careful. If I try to hit him with a Crunch, and he goes into Tyranitar, or rather Terrakion, he's gonna get Justified Boost. Now, the same thing happens right here. I go for a knockoff on the, um, on, I go for a knockoff on the Reuniclus, I hit the Terrakion. I don't know if he predicted that or he just gave his Terrakion up as fodder, but if he predicted that, really good. And I knock off his choice band. That was a choice band to Terraki on that hit that that well anyways. Plus two X Scizor. Live it with nine HP boy. You cannot deny the bulk of the priority. That's a super effective plus two X Scizor, thanks to the justified boost. That's basically a sword dance right there. Live it with nine HP, and I wasn't even at max HP. I don't have any defense EVs, just max HP. I don't have any defense. That is incredible. And since that Terrakion was Choice Banded, that means that my Golbat lived a Choice Banded Stone Edge from a Terrakion. That is no joke, people. Definitely consider Golbat. It's a bulky son of a gun. Either way, I'm gonna finally finish off this Terrakion here. I know I probably missed a lot of turns just explaining what happened beforehand, but to me, dealing the plus two X's or and the um and the uh, the Stone Edge from the Terrakion was so great because the plus two X's or pretty much means that it was a choice band it hit just without the choice band actually on it. So. I, I'm dealing with Nidoqueen now, but because he has Psy Shock, he's not going to be able to kill me in one hit. Why? Because I'm defensively bulky. Psy Shock hits the defensive side, I'll be in there lasting one more turn. Hit him with that Super Fan, get his HP low enough, and at this point now, Basculin will easily be able to come in and finish this guy with an Aqua Jet. Now, next turn, I bring in Basculin, but I was worried, because I was like, I could just go for an Aqua Jet here, but he might go into his Garchomp. I want to get off as much damage as possible. Let me just go for a Waterfall here. I think he might switch. But no, he doesn't switch, so that was kind of foolish on my part, but I kept worrying that he was going to bring um, Garchomp in, and I wanted to hit it for as much damage as possible, because that Garchomp is still at full HP. I'm going to have to revenge kill that thing sometime later on. I wanted to get as much damage off as possible, because at this point now, I'm not exactly sure how well I'll be able to hit the Garchomp up later on, because he's at max. 
Now, I was playing safely with Golbat and Mew simply because they have soft boiled and roost. They can heal up. Now, I switch in Golbat on the Garchomp, thinking that most likely it is going to be choiced in some way. I am lucky he is choice. The earthquake misses. I'm able to go for that roost, get my HP back up, and everything is all good, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm feeling really comfortable in there with Golbat right now, even though I am in there against the Reuniclus and he does carry psychic moves. But I'm thinking I can wear this Reuniclus down, obviously. Just keep going for Super Fangs, even though he does have leftovers, which, like I told you, is going to be very detrimental to the Super Fang strategy. But he is slower than Basculin, so I will be able to come through and I will be able to hit him with a waterfall or a crunch that will be faster than this guy. So I'm thinking now, you know what, the best way I wear this dude down, constantly going for Roost and going for Super Fangs. Roost and Super Fang, because the thing is, is that at this point he still has Garchomp left, and I wanted my Mew to come in safely. I wanted this guy to kill my Golbat essentially after going for Super Fangs over and over. Why do I want him to kill my Golbat? Because then I can bring in Mew safely, since Mew will be faster, soft boiled, get HP back up, and then take out the Garchomp with the Willow Wisp or something. Now he goes for Garchomp here. I still went for the Super Fang. The Super Fang is gonna hit the Garchomp, and, but no, it doesn't hit Garchomp! It misses! So this is why it's so detrimental. That Super Fang missing Garchomp is incredibly detrimental to my game. Why? Because the first Super Fang, first off, he doesn't have leftovers, so he wasn't gonna recover any HP. That first Super Fang would've taken him to half. And the second Super Fang that I just hit would have taken him to the point where this Aqua Jet would have finished off the Garchomp. So you see, that's why that Super Fang miss earlier counted so much, because that first Super Fang would have taken that Garchomp low enough to half, and then the second one would have taken him low enough to where I would have been able to finish him. So you know, that really sucks there. The original strategy was to let his Reuniclus kill my Gobat, and then let Mew come in on the Reuniclus, get to max HP with Soft Boiled, then I'll be ready for Garchomp. But I'm not ready for Garchomp now because he I'm at 9 HP, so he was able to kill me, and that will be the game. But there was a 2-0 defeat. Silver ranked game. Why is it silver? Because the factors of that battle were so intense. The, the, the whole decision making, that game took so long to complete. Not only that, but this dude was playing really intelligently with his Pokemon, and my Pokemon were pulling through even though they did lose two of their priority killers, and I think there were some really good decisions made in that game. It would have been really epic. Too bad some misses happened here and there, but it's the game. But however, the fact of the matter still remains that that Mew lived a plus two x from a Terrakion. A, a Golbat lived a Choice Banded. A, a Choice Banded. That's crazy. Choice Banded Stone Edge from a Terrakion. You can't deny the bulk of the priority thing, my friends, because mainly it's meant to take your HP down and then priority comes through and cleans it up. I'm sorry about the background noise. It's probably really loud, you know, it, it, my, my building, man. But um, yeah, that was a really great game. I really did enjoy that. Um, really fun. Thanks, Piccolini, once again for that great game. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I hope this shows some of the versatility of the Super Fang team, or the Priority Fang team, rather. If you guys have any suggestions or things that you want to leave with me, you can definitely message me in the comments section, or you can email me at ewnetwork2 at gmail.com. But hey, I ain't going to hold up your more of your time. I'm Attica from the Attica World Network, and thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you on the flip side. Take care of yourselves, and please, of course, as usual, have yourself a damn good one. Stay away from this place, actually. No, just I feel I need a little vacation, that's all.